When it comes to horrific crimes, this story is hard to beat. Michelle Blair kept a freezer in plain sight in her living room, and every day her two kids would have to pass it, knowing that the bodies of their brother and sister were inside. And that was just the beginning. Let's recap. Hey, I'm Amy. Thanks for watching True Crime Recaps. If you like getting all the crime in half the time, you are in the right place. And if you like spending time with us as much as we like spending it with you, it would really mean a lot if you took a second to give this a thumbs up and maybe even share our channel with a friend. Don't forget to say hi in the comments and let us know if you've got a great idea for a new recap. We always love hearing from you. And with that, let me tell you what Michelle Blair is capable of and you might never sleep again. In 2015, she's a 35-year-old unemployed single mom of four struggling to pay the rent on her Detroit area apartment. On a Tuesday morning in late March, a court officer shows up at her house with an eviction notice, but no one's home. Now, this isn't the kind of visit where they come back later to talk about alternatives. No. Michelle's been fielding warning notices about her unpaid rent for a while now, and this is it. So the landlord opens the door for the court-appointed moving crew, and they start moving the family stuff out to the curb. Before too long, though, they realize, eh, this isn't going to be a typical eviction. First of all, the house is a freaking cesspit of garbage, old food. It's hard to believe that anyone actually lives there. But prominently positioned near the front door is a white freezer chest. They open it, expecting to find frozen food, but that is not what Michelle is keeping cold. Inside is a 13-year-old girl wrapped in a plastic bag. Underneath her frozen body is another child, a 9-year-old boy, Stoney and Stephen, two of Michelle's kids. Police don't have far to look for her. Michelle, her 8-year-old son, and her 17-year-old daughter are at a neighbor's house, where Michelle is promptly arrested. Well, it took three days for the children's bodies to thaw enough for the medical examiner to get an official cause of death. But it only took about three minutes for Michelle to say, I killed those demons and I would do it again. To hear her tell it, she did what any loving mother would do. It started two years earlier when she says she came home to find her youngest son on the floor playing with his toys. Not just innocently playing, but like play acting sex stuff. He was six at the time, so she fears the worst. And she asks him, where did you learn to do those things? Did someone touch you that way? And she says that he told her a terrible story about the things that his nine-year-old brother, Stephen, was doing to him. So over the next two weeks, she inflicts this level of punishment on Stephen that would make the guards at Guantanamo flinch in horror. She forces Stephen into the bathtub. She pours scalding hot water on his genitals and his legs until his skin blisters and peels off. She hits and kicks him over and over. She wraps a leather belt tight around his neck, lifting him off his feet. She claims he made his little brother drink this blue stuff under the sink, so she pours Windex down Stephen's throat. This is the kind of abuse that went on and on for two weeks. She wraps a plastic bag around his head, suffocates him until he passes out, and when he comes to, she does it again. She does that over and over, and then finally, his little body cannot take any more, and he dies at the end of August 2012. That was actually her only regret. Michelle wanted to keep punishing him. His death was an accident. So she wraps his body in his favorite blanket and stuffs him in the freezer she keeps in the living room. Nine months later, Michelle decides that she still has a predator in the house, her 13-year-old daughter, Stoney. She claims her youngest told her that his sister was also abusing him. So Michelle strikes back, but this time she does want to kill her child. Slowly, she starves Stoney. She's so weak, she can't put up a fight. But Michelle throws scalding hot water on her daughter's body, peeling the skin from her bones. She uses her fists, her feet, and a wooden stick to hit her daughter in the head, the back, across the chest, anywhere she can reach. But when she gets bored of this torture, 
She puts a plastic grocery bag over Stoney's head and pulls a t-shirt tight around her neck until she suffocates and dies. But a 13-year-old is heavier than a 9-year-old, so she makes her oldest daughter help her lift her sister's body into the freezer. She drops it on top of Stephen because, as she told the judge, she's only got one freezer, so where else is she supposed to put her? And there they stay in the living room, frozen for more than a year with no one the wiser. Michelle Blair was sexually abused as a kid. I'm sure that's not a surprise to hear. And when she tried to tell her own mother about it, she got no help. The women didn't seem to care. So when Michelle found out her kids were abusing their brother, or so she thought, no evidence to that, she gave them the death penalty, literally. The thing is, the only person her kids needed saving from was her. All four of them suffered terrible abuse at her hands for years. Beatings with extension cords, hot curling irons, and of course, her fists were the norm. It took two of them to die for the other two to be rescued. Doctors found more than two dozen recent cuts, bruises, and broken teeth on her living kids. To everyone else, Michelle painted herself as this loving single mother just trying to get by. On her Facebook page, she posted pictures of mothers and babies with captions like, there's no greater blessing than being called mom. And every single day, though, back at home, her surviving kids were forced to walk past the frozen bodies of their brother and sister. Too scared to tell anyone, too scared to fight back, they lived in silence in that house of horrors. Where were their fathers? Where was the school? What about the neighbors? Didn't anyone notice when these two children disappeared? Well, yes and no. Stoney and Stephen's fathers, Alexander Dorsey and Stephen Barry, owed close to $50,000 in child support. And for one reason and another, they didn't visit often. They both said that they did try to see their kids, but when they would show up at the house, Michelle wouldn't let them in. Or when they would call, she would say that they weren't there. So they never actually got through. They didn't try super hard, but they didn't get through. As for school... There was no help coming from that direction. Their mother had pulled them out to homeschool them. When a neighbor asked about them, she told them that she'd sent them to live with a relative because they were stealing food from their little brother and sexually abusing him. That neighbor did not ask again. It's extra shocking it went this far because Child Protective Services investigated Michelle twice for abuse over the years, and they found countless cuts and bruises on all four of the kids, but for some reason, CPS didn't take them away. She kept collecting welfare benefits on all four, even after killing two of them. Well, after Michelle went to prison in 2015, their great aunt stepped in to take the surviving kids. She happens to be a former child abuse investigator with the Detroit Police Department. So who knows what Michelle was saying to keep her in the dark for all those years. There is a little light in this dark story, though. The kids thrived once they were out of that house. They both went back to school, and apparently the oldest went on to college. As for Michelle Blair, she still thinks she did the right thing, and she told reporters she sleeps just fine at night. And that's your recap. Thanks for hanging out with us today. If you like getting all the crime in half the time, go ahead and tap that subscribe button and the bell so you never miss a story. We're here Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, but don't go away. Catch up on more recaps right here, right now. Until next time, take care.